how to build an aesthetic body. If you don't have an aesthetic body right now, it's for two reasons. One, you're either a lazy piece of shit, but you know what? Because I think you're searching for this title on YouTube or researching fitness in general. I don't think it's that. The second is you just don't have the knowledge inside your brain to actually get you there. You see, getting an aesthetic body is just a simple fucking formula that you follow and then you will get there at the end providing you applied that effort that I just assumed you had, maybe wrongly. Now, you don't have the knowledge because A, people have fed you fucking bullshit and B, there are other cults like in lifting where people try and channel you down certain ways and think that you should lift in a certain way and that will not fucking work. I know, I've been down that rabbit hole and I'm going to explain to you in this video how that happens. This video, we will go deep into how to build an aesthetic body. I'll set up your nutrition, I'll set up your training, I'll give you the back end stuff because I can give you the steps. I can give you the actionable tips. You will fuck it up if I do not give you the underlying principles behind it to in order to help you get there. So, let's roll straight in. What an aesthetic body is and is not. This is not an aesthetic body. I don't care who the fuck you are. He's got muscle, he's bulked, He's strong like fucking bull. Let me tell you that for free, strong like bull. In fact, real strong like fucking bull. We, we, we were back squatting 195. Here's 180 on the bar, pulling 220. Strong like bull, benching 140. We were good. However, it's not fucking aesthetic, boys. It's not. This guy's a block. This guy's a literal human block. A breeze block. You could stick him inside a fucking warehouse building and he would hold that fucker up. That's not why we went to the gym, really, was it? That wasn't really what we wanted out of training. We wanted to look like fucking Marcus Aurelius, like a fucking Greek god. This is what we actually wanted. We wanted to look aesthetic. What does aesthetic look like? Well, to be honest, it's a more lean, athletic-looking physique. You need to be able to see your fucking six-pack, boys. Now, I appreciate you may need to put some tissue on first, maybe a bit of fat gain accumulated, but eventually you want to be able to cut down and see your fucking abs. You want to have delts. You want to have arms. You want to have chest. You want to have traps. You want to have that upper shelf stacked and then the lower region tight like fuck. Legs, they're important, but they're not fucking aesthetic. Of course, don't have a piss and set of chicken legs because then it looks like you can't fucking... Bang. So do train. And of course, they'll still be training for the legs and building aesthetic physique. But don't be a fucking mule and try and shift as much tin as possible. And where this really comes from is the functional lifter myth. Fucking pussy myth. This is what I fell in. I fell into this trap for a long period of time with my training. It needs to be functional. It's not functional to do bicep kills. It's not functional to have big arms. It's not functional to shut the fuck up. It is functional, I'll tell you why in a second. But what people deem as the functional lifter is someone that can back squat a lot, deadlift because they think, oh yeah, we need to pick something up off the floor. When you pick something up off the floor, it's probably going to be a box that is in a fucking weird square shape. So either you get someone to help it, help you with it, in which case, sit in by the corner of the box, you both lift it up, or it's never going to be a fucking barbell straight that you can pull off the floor anyway. It's going to be more like a tyre. So the functional lift, bullshit is it's literally going to waste your time but you're going to fall into that category because people will tell you to back squat they're going to tell you to deadlift they're going to tell you to overhead shoulder press and these aren't inherently bad exercises they're compound lifts they're multi-joint they train a lot of muscles but the way you execute them is not in a hypertrophic manner which means the way you lift is not slow enough the load you lift is really fucking heavy so it's above the rep ranges and you could say yeah do, do deadlifts in a hypertrophy rep range it's just fucking weird and no one ever really does it so while they are good exercise for general strength, remember the title of this video, you wanted an aesthetic physique, this is not going to get you an aesthetic physique, this is going to turn you into a big fucking blocky mule, that's all this is going to turn you into, with a round face, do you want a round face, because I know I fucking don't, you want a jawline that sticks out, so... Don't fall into this functional lifter trap. And the day will tell you, oh, arm day's gay. Fucking lift as much tin. And it's cool. Of course it's fucking cool to stick loads of tin on your back and throw it around the gym and then put the video on Instagram and everyone sees how, how much fucking testosterone you've got and how strong you are. I've been there. I've lived it. I've preached it for fucking years. But it's wrong, boys. I won't sit here and tell you this is how you're going to get fucking a better physique because it ain't true. It ain't true at all. 
I can tip up to any leg press, any back squat now, and I can shift some heavy, heavy lift with fucking great execution. Fine. But it's not going to get me the aesthetic physique. Now I'm trying to reverse being bottom half heavy. Because my arms weren't, weren't always a great point anyway. In fact, they're still not. They're still an area I want to bring up. But remember, the arms are going to bring up <clears throat> the upper shelf-like region. So it, remember, we're, we're focusing on, well, even the forearm, but from here across, that's what we want. Whereas here, we're more top half, we're bottom half heavy. And that's, that's not going to get you aesthetic physique. So the reason I, I say so heavily on this, this also takes a lot of fucking energy. It fries the nervous system. You have to move a lot of tin. It burns a lot of fuel. So by the time you come to do your isolation stuff, you're fucking toast. You're toast anyway, boys. So... Just be careful with this. I'm not saying skip legs, don't skip legs, but just do it in a smarter manner and remember the goal of what that was. This leg day, once a week max, once every 10 days maybe if you've got already well-developed legs. If you want aesthetic physique, this is not what's going to get you there. You know what truly is functional in the modern day? People think, oh, functional is lifting heavy shit off the ground. That's not fucking functional, boys. What you actually want, or what, what is actually functional is, I'd say two things. I haven't got a picture of it because I haven't taken any, is being able to scrap. So do some form of martial arts. That's fucking functional. If you walk around and know you can scrap, mentally you're going to be in a much better place. You're going to know you can protect yourself and the other people around you. That's fucking functional. That's very, very functional. So do that. But the second thing that is actually more functional is to have an aesthetic, good, like physique. And why do I say that? What's, what's, what, what's more functional? You being able to pick something up off the floor or you being able to continue your bloodline on? You, you know the answer when I say it like that. And, and to, what would increase the chances of continuing your bloodline on? Being in better shape to get a better chance of mating with the opposing sex. That would, that, that, tell me that's not more functional. What's going to get you there? The physique. So straight away, the argument of functional is fucking squashed. Right there and then, in that very much, as soon as I whittle everything down to being primal, that it, it literally is. To be functional is to have a better physique, because you'll get better members of the opposing sex. Better members of the opposing sex means you will breed better offspring, which, which will continue your fucking bloodline. They, it don't get more functional than that, boys. It really doesn't. And remember, that's what you actually wanted. What you wanted was to not look like a skinny weasel dick. Now... Never be satisfied with your physique. Fuck, I'm not satisfied with this. I'm happy. Yeah, it's cool. It's nice. Yeah, there's good tissue. I'm not fucking satisfied though, and I never will be. And that's a fucking good thing. People tell you, oh, you never have too much muscle. You never have... There may be a point where you're like, I don't really need that more. Maybe I'll just focus on leanness. But for a long, a long period of time, like I will look better when I've got another five kilos of tissue, specifically around the arms, the upper chest, and the traps. Traps, boys, weak point in mind. I've highlighted it. I understand it. I'll sit here with humility and tell you that is an area I need to grow. Compared to how well my lats have developed, upper traps, not really been prioritizing it. Now we are. See, I do this for myself as well. So this is going to bring you a lot more happiness because you'll be in better shape. That was what you wanted in the first place. So mentally, you're going to be a happier, healthier person. If you're a happier, healthier person, how are you then going to perform at work? Do you think better or worse? Probably better. Okay, you perform better at work. How are you going to be in your social and family and relationship life? Better or worse? Because now you, you feel better and look better and also you're working better. You think that's going to tipple into the other side of your life? Probably. If all three of these are firing on all cylinders, do you think you're going to be quite grateful and humble about life? Yeah, probably. So you, you think spiritually you might be a bit better as well? More than likely. And then if everything's in such a good space, do you think you want to share that message to the world? I, I think so. So you'll help more people as well. So weirdly enough, just by having a bigger set of fucking arms, every point of your life is going to get better. And that's what you actually wanted. So building an aesthetic physique is really, really, as we ten minutes, nine minutes into this video, we understand it's a non-negotiable. You need to build that aesthetic physique and you need to do it as soon as fucking possible. So you can do pull-ups in a park with a woman strapped to your back because that will get you more girls and it will squash any insecurities you have and you can talk about it on YouTube just like me. Um, but obviously I have to put these photos up boys because otherwise I can talk a lot of stuff. But you want to see some spunky evidence, don't you? Of course you do. I understand. Anyway, let's, let's roll. So how are we going to get you there? We've spoke about the importance of it. Now let's get into the meat. If you didn't have a notebook and pen out, 
fucking get one right now. Do not sit here and passively listen to this. I want you to take the action steps and take the notes. We will start off with the nutrition section. We're going to go detailed and we're going to set this up for you specifically. Now, I want you to look at this guy's physique. Let's say you've, you've, you've been lifting like this. Currently looking around here. Okay, how should we set up this guy's nutrition? Okay, so the initial step we'll need to do to set up your nutrition is to understand your current level of body composition. That is how much body fat and muscle you are currently carrying. So as we assess this guy's physique, not too bad. I mean, we can still see slight bit of abstruction and slight bit of uh, intercolostal and rib area, which is actually quite good. So now what we can do is compare this to the pre-recorded uh, measurements that I've got of guys here. So we can see he's not quite 20%. In fact, he's nowhere really near 20%, but I wouldn't say he's as tight as 15 either. I think he's sat somewhere in the middle. Maybe a little bit closer towards 15, but I think he sat around 17%. Now, you may think, oh, you're kind of looking at the photo and eyeballing it with, with other methods. Honestly, boys, that is the best method to work out your body fat. Compare a photo. Always compare photos because photos don't lie. To already pre-recorded or this, this guide of photos. Now, you can use calipers. You can use a desk scan. But unless the calipers are taken by the same person that knows how to take calipers, they'll be inaccurate. And if they're wildly inaccurate, your nutrition is going to be different, so your progress is going to be slower. If you use a DEXA scan, you're not going to go to and get a fucking DEXA scan. Don't bullshit me right now. You're not going to go and do that, are you? So, photos is honestly, this is your best bet that you can use at home. This is how you're going to compare it. So, we know this guy is 17% body fat. And I remember at this time, this guy was 85 kg. So, what we're going to do with my fancy calorie calculator is put those figures in here. So he's 85 kg and he is 17% body fat. If you think this would be useful for you, um, drop in the comments below that you would like it and I'll get it fired over to you. Uh, I made this myself off a formula when I was working at the world's leading personal training company. Um, they they, they like taught me all the knowledge and I liked practicing it, putting it into Excel. So we did that and, and I made this guide auto populate. It's fucking sick to be honest, really like it. Um, so. Let's go through the numbers. His lean mass, 70.5. Uh, RMR, so how many calories do you need for normal daily function without like moving? This is what he needs out of bed, 1,800. How active are you within a given day? So the average person is going to be around 155. Most people fall into the average. Train three to five days a week. Not so active in their job, mainly like a little bit desk bound, but a little bit on their feet as well. They're, 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 that's the average person. When I was in the army and we were, we were doing loads of exercises, we were doing uh, running with weight, all this, this, that, and the other, activity is higher, 175. If you're a builder, probably 175 as well. Elite athletes, 195. Probably not elite athlete if you're watching this. Um, lightly active, so a little bit more desk bound and a little less uh, training, 135, and then completely desk bound, don't do fuck all. 1.2 times these two figures together it will give you maintenance amount of calories so this guy needs 2900 pretty much to keep his physique exactly where it is now to get aesthetic we need to see midsection we need to see abs so this guy actually does need to cut down if you've watched any of my previous videos on how to build muscle and lose fat you will know i've done at least two of them with client results you will know that that is possible. You want the aesthetic physique, lose the body fat, you will be able to build muscle as well if you follow what's in, in those videos. Specifically the first one, um, follow that one and that will literally get you there. It's a, it's a, it's a whole uh, topic in itself, but that will get you there. You can still build muscle whilst losing body fat and you're going to want to do that. Now, one thing I'll say is when you program your nutrition, if depending on the body fat, so if, if you're anywhere from 15 to 20%, don't go so aggressive when you start your deficit, okay? A minimum half a percent, okay? Don't go any more than that. So this guy's going to go from 29 down to 2463, or you could be even more conservative and you could put him in a 0 0.25 drop, so just at 27, because you will drop your calories, you'll start to eat. Now, you can see how your body responds. What did the scale weight do? Because you will get a response off that drop in the first week. If you can keep food as high as possible, you will drive performance in the gym. You drive performance in the gym, you build and retain as much tissue as possible. And that was always the goal, is not to get lighter and lighter and lighter and smaller. It was to build the tissue and just rip off the body fat. So... If, if this figure didn't really change, drop it a little bit more. And only pull food when you don't see a change. You've got food and you've got cardio and you've got steps. 
these are levers to pull in order to see change within the physique when, when you don't on a week by week basis. Take photos, track the scale weight, and then pull those levers. So we know to set this guy up, 2,700 calories. Uh, protein, this needs to be important. Do not miss this fucking target because you train, that's going to be the most important factor of building and retaining tissue. Protein is like the, the second, like it's its fucking wife. They bind together and that's how we keep and build tissue. Fats set to 25% of the target and carbs are filled with the rest. 337. Uh, 337. Now, so you've got your initial food and your setup. This is how many calories he would need. You can do this strictly for you. And then you're going to think, right, well, what do I need to eat? First of all, get your protein right first. Here's uh, 40 grams so go straight to this one because you're going to need the size of 40 grams. You're going to split that up probably across your even meals across the day. Choose what you like. This is the calories it's going to cost. This is how much you need of that weighed raw and uncooked. Uh, then set your fat target, whatever fats you like, oils, chocolate, dark chocolate, fucking very, very good. Nut butters and pistachios. Obviously, there's other means. You can have eggs, which have the fat in, etc., etc. Uh, but that's how you set that up. And then you fill the rest with carbs from a mixture of high GI, which you'd have around the workout, fruits, um, jam with bread, uh, and then your lower GI, things that digest a little bit longer, stuff like oats, um, your rice, your pasta, and um, your... Uh, Potatoes, although they are a little bit on the, on the higher GI scale. Now, I know there's a big fad going out online about the carnivore diet. I think it's good. I like the thesis behind it. Sharp, fucking steak and eggs, good for testosterone. But if you, if you, want, to, if you want to drive performance in the gym, you're going to need some level of carbs. Unless your body is very efficient at using fat, but fat takes a fuck ton more time to digest and then be used as energy. Carbs that should go straight into the bloodstream if they're high GI, you can use them obviously in the form of glucose or they're stored in the muscle as muscle glycogen. So people say carbs are bad, they get a bad rap. They, they are important if you wanna drive mus muscle growth. There are probably ways around it. I'm just showing you what I do. If you don't like it, that's fair enough. But that's how you would set your food up relative to this. And then as you go down, now you can afford, where fats are at 75 for this guy, he could afford to pull them down a little bit lower as you go through the diet, keep carbs higher to drive performance in the gym because the goal was to retain as much tissue as possible and build. So if you want to do that, carbs will be your biggest friend. So that's how we're going to structure your nutrition. And of course, you attract the scale weight and photos and tailor it down as the weeks go by. Now, let's go over how we're going to train. Okay, so when it comes to training, we understood that there are a set select of muscle groups we want to train. I'm going to give you just some top exercises to do for that. The side delts is going to be very important for, for actually looking to set. It's going to give you the round cap look. And I believe this exercise to be pretty much one of the best for that. Lateral raises are going to be your biggest friend in this anyway. If you can put a cable on, look, there's tension now at the bottom. Is there tension at the bottom of a dumbbell? No, because the resistance just drops straight down. The dumbbell is only really hard towards the top. Here we have tension on all the way. Bring your arm in a Y shape, reach out as far as you can and fucking trash the muscle. Okay, like so. Back of the arms, uh, you're gonna wanna hit the triceps, non-negotiable. Start with some form of a push down, keep the upper arm locked in. And then again, this is a great uh, bit of kit because you can load it heavy. What you'll find with ropes, sometimes you can't load them up as heavy because of the small surface area. Use a bar or what you can get is like two uh, D handles, put them on here and then push them down now. Keep this locked in. Think about extending from the elbow. The biceps is obviously going to be another non-negotiable one. Ideally with biceps, people fucking cheat. So what you're going to need to do is support the upper arm, just move from the elbow joint and contract the bicep to do so. Okay, the chest, a very, very important non-negotiable one. Now, people struggle to stimulate their chest. So in all your workouts, when you're doing push, you're going to want to start with some form of a pec deck or a cable fly. And the reason being, the function of the, of the chest is to drive the upper arm, the humerus, towards the midline of the body, your sternum. So if you can put resistance in the way of that, it's going to drive a lot of blood to the tissue before you actually go do your big press, as you can see here. Yeah, think about driving the upper and the inside of your arms together, then go on to your heavy exercise and make sure you're doing something for the upper portion of the chest. Make it supported, make it stable and load the fuck out of it. Don't get too fixated on using barbells uh, and dumbbells are very, very good. But if you can use a machine and load that fucker up with good technique, you will add tissue. Upper back region is going to be important as well. Now I'm keen for the lats. 
but the upper back region cannot be missed. So support the chest and go into some form of a row. For the lats, lat pull down's good. This is better. This is what's blowing my lats up. It's faster because um, you're literally keeping the arm pinpointed to the body and then fixed in. Dips. Now, triceps for mine, I actually think is a weaker area. And specifically the long head, you're going to want to do dips for this. Um, these dips are very loadable, so you can stack a lot of weight on. And then it also hits the muscle in the lengthened position. So as it gets longer, there's not really that much resistance at the top. Um, but they, they are some quick exercises that I would use when training. Some, uh, some non-negotiables that you're going to want to do for when, when, when you're doing your training. So as we spoke about in our uh, programming lecture yesterday, you're going to want to do so two times per week, upper body. Uh, let's say, I'm going to say, people say 20 sets. I'm going to say 15 hard sets. What is a hard set? Where you increased either the reps or the load on that given exercise and you took it to zero reps in reserve. That means you couldn't have done another fucking rep, no matter what happened. And you even did like a partial or a failed rep. You're going to need to do those like every time you train, okay? Always train fucking hard. There's, there is no substitute for training hard, boys. There really isn't. Train the muscle twice a week, train hard, apply progressive overload, or remember my other video on how to force muscle growth, provide, provide progressive stimulus, not progressive overload, progressive stimulus. Watch that video, it really does separate the two. I'm not gonna go into that in this because we're already 20 minutes deep into this, okay? But they're the main exercises you, you are going to want to do. If you want a full sample program, watch the last video, that's got all that in there. Let's move on to the next points. Outside the gym. So, of course, the gym is probably the most important part. The nutrition, pretty much as important. They go hand in hand together. Then you've got outside the gym just to fucking supplement everything. You're going to need to sleep. Of course you are. That's how you grow. Get eight hours. Just fucking go to bed. Get off your phone. Go to bed. Get the time in that you need to sleep and recover. You may only need seven. Sleep fucking seven. Sleep whatever you need to recover. But the point I'm making is stop jacking on it. Stop staying up on your fucking phone looking at bullshit because it's not going to help you grow and get in a good space. Water. Okay, as we spoke about, when you consume carbohydrates, they get stored in the muscle as glycogen. But you need, and the, the, the cue is kind of in the title of carbohydrate, you need to add water to that in order for the muscles to be fuller. So... That is then going to drive more energy because of the, the glycogen in the muscle, etc., etc. Hydrate like fuck. Just or continue to drink water. You probably average guy three to four liters a day. Just drink that, and you'll you'll be absolutely fine. Steps. So this is a very good means that you're going to use to pull off that body fat. Now daily, daily, even if you're bulking, if you're cutting, you're going to want to be in around the rate region of ten thousand. If you're cutting, maybe ten to twelve. If you're bulking. 8,000, but you're going to need to walk each and every day. So that's just a non-negotiable you do now. Factor it into your time. Uh, supplements. If you are going to take supplements, creatine monohydrate, whether you're bulking or cutting, I would take that as a non-negotiable. Um, th there's no reason not to take it. It's very good for building strength. It's good for cognitive function. And there's just many studies on that. I'm not going to go into a creatine lecture. Uh, a BCA, when you're training to keep performance high, not a necessity, but could have. Magnesium, good for sleep and recovery if you don't sleep that well. Zinc is good for energy in the morning. Um, if you're not in a warm country, get your vitamin D3 in. Um, that, that, that will really help you. And even if you are, unless you're out in the sun all day, like I should, I, I should take it here, even though I'm in Mexico and the sun's out, because I'm probably not in it enough, to be honest. Uh, Amigo free if you're not running any fish in the diet, and then also uh, a multivitamin just to cover your bases. But you should have enough from from fruit and veg that are in your diets anyway, especially if you're cutting, fruit and veg is going to be a necessity to have within within your diet plan. And the, and, the, and the last thing I'll say is plan fucking everything. Life will come and get you. If you do not plan, life has different fucking ideas for you. Everybody has different, your boss has a different idea for you. Your fucking missus has a different idea for you. Your parents have a different idea for you. Friends, everyone has an idea for you. If you don't decide how life is going to go, they will fucking decide for you. Do you think they're going to decide with your aesthetic physique in mind? Are they fucked? They're going to decide with their interest. How do you execute on this then? What's an actionable step you can do right now? Go onto your notes page of your phone. Write out, to do, whatever the day of the week is tomorrow. Use the uh, the circular tick off section, and you're going to write out: wake up at 6 a.m., hydrate one liter of water, make bed, stop being a piece of shit. Tick. 
Step two, whatever work you needed to do. Number three, uh, meal one, which is this. Steps at this time. Work here, gym here, food here, boom, 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 boom. And you tick them off because you know what the, the best version of you should do tomorrow right now. You can be the pilot, plan it out for him. When tomorrow comes around, if you haven't planned that day, you will do whatever you feel like doing. And most of the time, that won't be anything fucking productive because human beings are lazy. But if you blindly follow that list, you will just tick things off day after day after day after day. As well, outside the gym, don't think about binning everything out your cupboards. You want to train the muscle that is disciplined, leave the junk food in the cupboard. No, it's there. Say no. Every day you say no, you build and progressively overload that muscle that is disciplined. So don't throw everything out your cupboards, okay? Do not pay lip service to those last two points. If, if, you, if you try and do everything else, ignore those last two points, you won't get an aesthetic physique. I tell you right now, you will fail. You will fuck it up because your brain wants to do what's easy, okay? So do whatever it feels like. And if you try and throw away the snacks, as soon as they're put back in front of you, you will gobble them up like a fucking little school kid. So do not do that. Follow those two points, what I said, or you will fuck it up. The last thing, as we said, people have got different ideas for you. The word no needs to come out of your mouth more than it does yes. You'll get invited to things which will not be aligned to get an aesthetic physique. Getting an aesthetic physique sounds cool. It looks cool. It gets you cool shit. But you know what? It's fucking hard to get. That's why not that everybody has, has one. And that's why you want one. Because it sets you up, it gives you higher status, it makes you be perceived as more value. Boys, I won't bullshit you. This whole guide sounded quite cool and like knowledgeable and yeah, yeah, you like the perspective. I won't bullshit you. It is not easy to get an aesthetic physique. You have to be a certain person that you probably aren't right now, that's why you don't have it. So I can give you all the steps, but it's about the man you need to become in order to hold the physique. If you don't become that man, you will never, you may get there, you will fuck it up and you will lose it very, very quickly. Because you didn't fix you. You didn't fix the raw fundamentals that are broken within your brain. Now, everyone has a different idea for you. You have to say fucking no. And it's not easy. It's not sexy to be like, no, I'm not going on this date tonight because I need to get my eight hours sleep because I'm in a deficit. And I know when I don't sleep eight hours, I have more cravings the next day. I'm more likely to cheat and I'm more likely not to get to my goal. So I'm going to have to say no. No, I'm not going to go and see my friends tonight because they want to go to this event and there's nothing I can really do and eat and drink there. So I'm not going to go. It sounded cool. All this sounds cool. This looks cool. This looks cool. What ain't cool is saying no to shit. What ain't cool is slightly being a bit of a hermit and just making this your primary focus. So I would say pair this with some other form of productive shit so you can kill two birds with one stone. If you're, if you're in your own mind anyway, not like partying and socialising, you may as well focus on this and probably your work to level up both areas of your life. So you need to learn to say no to shit. Now, it's all about the man you need to become. I've got two lectures on self-image on this channel. They're, they're, they're titled with their titles, but they've got part one and part two. Part two is probably even, even better than part one. Go watch that one. That will help get you in the mind frame of being able to say no to shit and to become the man that you need to be, okay? From, from this guy to this guy, two completely different human beings. And that is what it was all about. It was all about the man I needed to become in order to hold the physique. To get to the next stage, I need to become a different version of me in order to get to that point. The same will apply for you. Boys, I'm gonna wrap this video up here. If you want me to do this whole process for you and make sure you get there with my fucking raw accountability and I'll fucking chase you until you get to that result, there'll be a link in the description, book a call uh, and see if you actually wanna, if, if we would be good to work together, if we could be bros. And I'll get you to the fucking end result, okay? And you'll join the Gorilla Platoon. Um, if not, you found this video useful, nice one, subscribe. I'm here every fucking day. As you can see from the channel, we turn up every day, we give the value, we help the fucking people. Because, why is it good for me if, I, if you do this? Because potentially, we may meet in the future. If we do, and you've leveled up your physique, and more importantly, your mindset, and where you're going in life, we'd probably be mates. Which is better for me because I'm all for having more and more friends. Of course I am. People say keep your circle close and naturally that would happen anyway. But I'm all for meeting fucking new, good, cool people. So I hope you follow this. I hope you get to that point. And I hope one day we fucking meet and we end up bros.
Because if you don't follow this, guess what? We'll never be fucking bros. I think you're a piece of shit and you don't bring anything to my life. But anyway, that's a side tangent. I hope this video is useful. Subscribe right now or I'll fucking jump through the screen and make you subscribe. And I'll see you tomorrow.